Good evening, Ecclesia. Let's all uh, stand together.
our sins and griefs to bear, and oh, what a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. Oh, because we do not care. Everything to God in prayer. It says, Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. And taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he began to be sorrowful and troubled. And then he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch with me. And going a little farther, he fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. Spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. 
again for the second time, he went away and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Amen. You may be seated. And God, it's in those, it's in those words in that moment that we are confronted with Jesus being fully God and yet at the same time fully man. And we see, Lord, the, the pain, the sorrow, the emotional weight And, and Lord, just the, the magnitude of the task that was, that was still before him. And Lord, you, you even just sense this loneliness as he is about to do what no one else could do in order to save the very people that were against him. And so, Lord, uh, we just, uh, we right now, tonight, we come together on a night that is labeled Good Friday, but it is only good because of Jesus, and it is only good because of the results. Uh, but, Lord, right now, just as we're here in the space and, and we have our, our kids with us, Lord, uh, as well, I just pray that, uh, Lord, you would, you would take us there, take us to that setting, take us to that place, Lord, so that we could once again be reminded that the grace that we've received was not cheap. It costs Jesus everything. And so, Lord, we reflect and we remember that tonight. In your name, amen. You know, as I was wrestling through this scene, this, this, this last week, you know, after Jesus' triumphal entry, and, and these conversations that we're brought into that he has with the Father, whether it's in John chapter 12, where, where he, he says, my soul is troubled, right? And, and, he, and, he, and he's carrying around just this intense weight, and, and just as we uh, read just now out of Matthew 26 as he's, as he's in the garden and, and just having this time with the Lord and, and challenging his disciples in this as well. And what just kept uh, hitting me this week is, is how if, if we are going to glorify God with our life, it is, it is always going to be connected to obedience, and the greatest act of glorifying God and the greatest act of obedience that I can see in Scripture is Christ going to the cross. It's, it's uh, I just, over and over, the obedience that Jesus demonstrated and had. I mean, when you think of the words that he's speaking to the Father, there's no way you can say, well, that, that was easy. He's, he's literally saying to the Father, you know, essentially, are we sure this is the best route still? I mean, we, have we unpacked all of our options? Is there another way? Because I'll sign up for that, right? And yet, there was no other way. This lonely road that Jesus was going to walk, Jesus, the perfect Messiah, out of obedience to the Father, willingly goes to the cross. And after three religious and three civil trials in Matthew chapter 27, verse 27, I, I wanna just read to us through God's word what Jesus did for us. It says in verse 27, and we're just gonna let the Bible speak for itself. It says, then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters and they gathered the whole battalion before him. And they stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on his head 
and put a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spit on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him and led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall, but when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his garments among them by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And over his head, they put the charge against him, which read, this is Jesus, the king of the Jews. Then two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left. And those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads and saying, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself. If you are the son of God, come down from the cross. So also the chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him, saying, he saved others, he cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel, let him come down now from the cross and we will believe in him. He trusts in God, let God deliver him now if he desires him. For he said, I am the son of God. And the robbers who were crucified with him also reviled him in the same way. Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, this man is calling Elijah. And one of them at once ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine and put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, wait, let's see whether Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised and coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. When the centurion and those who were with him keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were filled with awe and said, truly, this was the Son of God. We read that and it just breaks our heart, doesn't it? And we, we, as we read it, we start yelling at the pages, defend yourself, Jesus. Like, defend yourself. Come on. Light a few of them up. Let's go. Show them. But he doesn't. He takes the spit that they are spitting on him. He takes these false accusations, the insults, over and over again, the mockery, and the physical blows. And we just, inside of all of us, there is this cry for justice. We want justice for Jesus, don't we? But I'll tell you what, even more so, we don't want justice for us. Because justice for us was the penalty for our own sins being the thing that we would have to pay for. And so Jesus was obedient all the way to the cross. 
publicly humiliated, stripped down, bloodied, and barely just hanging there, he gives up his spirit. And in 1 Peter 2.24, it says, he himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. And then these powerful words that we cling to tonight, by his wounds, you have been healed. See, from scripture, it tells us over and over again that that we're, we were born with this infection, this, this sin, and, and, and this sin, uh, there, 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 was, there was nothing we could do uh, in order to satisfy that, that, that debt that, that we had attached to our name, attached to our life, and, and, and every mistake, every sinful action that we've made has continued to remind us of that. And that reality and that debt that we could never pay. And so there had to be a perfect sacrifice because Romans is so clear, the wages of sin is death, right? Uh, but then we see that the free gift of God is eternal life through, through Jesus. And so Jesus is the perfect sacrifice and through his death, and I just love the visual, right, of, of, of the temple curtain being torn, the divider uh, from the people to the holy of holies. It is completely uh, taken away, that dividing wall that was there that we all felt between uh, sinful humanity and a perfect and holy God, and Jesus rips it down, tears it down through his work on the cross, and that's why Ephesians 2.13 tells us, but now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. A way was made. The debt was, the debt was paid. And, and we're reminded even in John chapter 19, verse 30, when Jesus says on the cross before his final breath, he shouts out, it is finished. It is finished. What a moment. I mean, some of us have had major tasks, major, major projects, and, and that moment of just saying, it is finished, is so rewarding, isn't it? So rewarding. And you think of what Jesus did in this, this short time on earth and all that he went through, and he's there in agony and pain, feeling all of it, um, and, and yet he cries out, it is, it is finished. In other words, the debt has been paid, paid in full. I've done the task, I've fulfilled it. And as we think of our stories, and we think of the pain that we've experienced or maybe we've caused, we think of the failures, the mistakes, the words that we can never take back. Those are all things that Jesus willingly took to the cross and paid for. So that you and I can be here tonight and remember that work, but remember it without guilt, without shame. That we can come here in light of the forgiveness for all of those things in our lives. Because of what he did, because he finished the task. And so we are told to not forget what Jesus did. We, we are compelled to not just read through that, to understand that, to make a decision and just go, oh, thank you, Jesus, I'm so glad you did that, and just move on with our lives. Uh, no, uh, the, the day before Jesus went to the cross, during the, during the Passover meal, he initiated communion for the first time. And in Matthew chapter 26, verse 26, uh, it says this, it says, now as they were eating, Jesus took bread, and after blessing it, broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. And he took a cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant 
which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. I just, uh, those words, are you kidding me? And, and, I, and I imagine myself at the table and he's saying that and, and the disciples don't get it. They don't understand. But what Jesus is, is, is saying here uh, uh, to his disciples, to his followers uh, during this meal that, 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 was, that was a celebration, right? It was Passover season, the Passover meal. And, and so it celebrated and honored their people's greatest rescue, right? Um, the, the Exodus rescue, being rescued out of Egypt, the Passover, when blood was sprinkled on the doorpost, when they were told to sacrifice the, the, the perfect lamb over the doorpost, and, the, and the, literally uh, death was going to pass over, right? And this incredible saving act that they were never to forget. They were always to remember, and yet Jesus, in the midst of celebrating that, he connects these specific elements to the saving work that he was going to accomplish, which is the greater exodus, the greater rescue. And what he's saying here is he's referencing the bread, his suffering death. He's, he's talking about his blood that will save us. Jesus' blood is the blood that is going to be poured out instead of ours. He is speaking in sacrificial language. He is, as John the Baptist declared when he saw him in John chapter 1, 29, when John cried out, the Lamb of God, he who takes away the sins of the world. And so during Passover celebration, Jesus was the perfect sacrificial lamb for the sins of the world. So he initiates communion. And then later, Paul goes back to this in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, in verse 23, Paul says, for I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And so do it, do it often, and every time you do it, think about why you're doing it. What are you proclaiming? And so ever since then, uh, throughout church history, we have been doing this to remember the Savior's saving work. So tonight, on Good Friday, we're gonna take communion together in remembrance of the death of Jesus. We're gonna take it together. So I'm just gonna invite the band back up here. And as, as, as they play, I'm going to invite us to take the communion elements. And, and, and they're gonna pray, or they're gonna play a, a song. During that first song, I wanna invite you to do that. And, and then I'm gonna encourage you to go back to your seat. And as you go back to your seat, I wanna, I wanna encourage us to not just take it. Weekly at our church, we, we take communion, and people go back to their seats and take it, but... Um, Tonight, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come back up and we're gonna take it all collectively together. And part of the reason also for that tonight is I want us to really take this time and, and really focus in on the verses that we just read and really remember what he did for you. What he did for you. You have to connect the story to you. You have to see that in Jesus' eyes as he went to the cross for my sins.
He bore that weight. I know it grieved him. And I, I just gotta believe when he's like, hey, God, if there's any other way, I mean, do we have to deal with Steve like this? And I, I think it's good and healthy for us to put our name there because it reminds us One, that this grace isn't cheap that we've received. But I think two, this reminds me that although other people may not see or acknowledge any significance in me, God says that I was created in his image and that I have enough value to where Jesus went to the cross to pay for my sins so that there was an opportunity for me to be adopted into his forever family. And so there's just no way that we can consider the cross and also not see how much you matter to the Lord, how much he loves you. Because somehow, some way, we read in scripture that for the joy that was before him, Jesus went to the cross, somehow, you and I are connected to that. And so as we line up and take these elements and go back to our seat, let's have some time of confession with the Lord, whatever needs to just be confessed and brought to him. Let's, let's have some time of just, just praise between you and, and him. I, I mean, there's some things that, that have happened in your life and maybe you've never acknowledged that that it was, that you're only here because of his work, because he intervened in those moments. And, and I think for all of us, there's, there's a joy that can be found tonight just in the fact that Jesus willingly did this for us. And so I wanna just take some time during this song here and, and have a time of confession and, and just have this time of praise with the Lord and, and just continue to remind yourself that Jesus never gave up on you. And then I'm gonna come up at the end and lead us in communion together. So right now, I'm just gonna invite you to stand. And, and they're gonna start singing. As they start singing and, and we go into this time of worship, I wanna just invite you to come forward and, and take communion and go back to your seat and just pray over the bread Pray over the juice. Think about what it represents. And think about how Jesus is continually connected himself to your story and how he's never given up on you and how, how much he loves you and how he and only he could have taken all of those things that are disqualifying in your life and removed them as far as the east is from the west so that we can even be here tonight and just praise him. And so let's sing and let's, let's take communion and I'll come up at the end of the song and we'll take it to you.
One more time for us.
You know, uh, this supper that they're having, it, it was an eventful one when you read about it. A lot going on. Jesus even confronts Judas. Let's do what you've got to do. And all this is happening, and yet, you know, Jesus just pauses with his closest followers. And in the midst of celebration and distraction, he zones in and gets all of their attention centered on one thing. And he uses a tangible example, an illustration, as he so often did, to point to what he had already told them was going to happen. But he changed forever how they would approach the cup and the bread And it says in verse 26, as we already read, now as they were eating, Jesus took bread and after blessing it, broke it and gave it to the disciples and he said, take it, this is my body. So I'm gonna pray for the bread right now and then we'll take it together. Lord, Lord, why does it have to, Take a Good Friday gathering to get us to this place before you, the place where we should be every day, the place where we should be mindful of the sacrifice, thankful. And God, um, it's an obedience that, that asks, what is the obedience that we're called to? We truly wanna glorify our Savior and our Lord. And so Lord, right now, we remember through this piece of bread, your body. Your body, Lord, that went through what we can't even fathom. Lord, we know that Rome had perfected torture. And Lord, they did it in a public way along a, a busy section, Lord, so that as many people could see what they did to your body, what they did to you. And yet, Lord, by your wounds, we are healed. And so, Lord, right now, we take this in remembrance of your sacrifice. In Jesus' name, amen. It says, and he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant. My blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Don't miss that next four. For the forgiveness of sins. And then he says something so cool here. I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And so there's, there's this piece to this where I'm, I'm seeing the blood that was spilled for my sins. And I'm thanking him for that, that sacrifice. It, it, was, it was supposed to be me, but I couldn't pay that penalty. And through the blood of Christ, we are saved. We are forgiven. 
and our sin is removed. It's no longer our label, it's no longer our identity. We've been given a new name. So let's thank the Lord, let's pray for this. God, we thank you for your innocent, perfect blood that was was given sacrifice so that we could be saved. You were the sacrificial lamb. And so, Lord, thank you for just forgiveness, Lord. As so many of us have just, even right now in this moment, processed all of the reasons we fall short. Lord, all of, the, all of the things we did and said, even today, that remind us that we're unworthy, and yet through the blood that was spilled on the cross for us, we are forgiven. We are forgiven. And so we are no longer under the shame and the guilt that the enemy has tried to attach to our names. We are a child of God. And so, Lord, right now, we reflect and remember the blood that was spilled on our behalf. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And then they sung. So we're gonna sing, okay? Because I tell you what, the best part But the whole story is even in that moment on the cross, as he's saying it is finished, we know that there was more to come and there was victory that was won as well. And so, Let's just go to the Lord now and let's just sing in light of this freedom, in light of the forgiveness, and in light of the resurrection. So let's, let's just go to the Lord now. Let's, let's praise him, let's sing, and then we'll be dismissed.
enthroned in glory, my Savior King. Your loving kindness has welcomed me. Though I'm unworthy of majesty, you wrap the lowly in royalty. And I will lay my crowns down at your feet. You are holy, holy, and I will give my life as an offering. You are worthy, so worthy. Seek your face, broken and poured out without restraint. In full abandon before my King, here I surrender my everything. And I will lay my crowns down.
It's almost like, oh, I can't clap yet, <laughs> right? Like, Good Friday's always that, like, ah. <laughs> and it's just crazy to think, even that Roman guard who's there, he's like, man, that, that was the Son of God. And all these events that happen, right? And, and, and the fear and the chaos of the temple veil of the, uh, the, the bodies being raised up and walking around, all of this, and yet nobody's at all connecting it to what is about to happen. That the greatest victory that the world has ever known, the very victory that would provide transformation for you and me, the, to be born again, that that was about to take place. The best was yet to come. And so, you gotta come back. And you need to bring some people with you. Tomorrow night, five o'clock, we're right here. And then Sunday, 8.15, 10 and 11.45, we're gonna celebrate. I mean, we are going to celebrate. And we are going to present the gospel. I mean, because that is what the resurrection has won. And we're gonna respond uh, to that. And so uh, I wanna encourage you, uh, man, let's invite people. And uh, I don't know which gathering you're planning on coming to, but invite people to that gathering. And I cannot wait uh, at, for tomorrow. And then Sunday, as we just uh, celebrate the resurrection of our risen Lord. And, uh, and we anticipate, as we just sang, as we get to join the eternal song, holy, holy, holy. Is that not a beautiful picture, a beautiful image? Do you not, even in that communion moment, go, man, I can't wait for the next communion? It's gonna be amazing, you guys. And so I pray that we're encouraged, excited, uh, and that we, we leave because the debt has been paid, paid in full. And uh, it's no longer on you. Uh, our Savior has won that freedom for you. So uh, you guys, you are dismissed tonight. Uh, God bless you, and we'll see some of you tomorrow and a bunch of you Sunday, all right? Get the word out, invite people. You are dismissed.